So recall in our previous lesson that we've looked at thread and how to launch multiple threads. But we had to be careful in this step where we had to join the threads at the right time. And most of the time, if we mean to just join the thread from the thread that we were called from, in our case, the main thread, then there must be a better way so that we don't forget to do this. So there is a construct for this in C20 that we can observe here. So let's go ahead and just recall what we had in this example here, where we had our lambda here, where we would print out some messages with the thread ID and the argument. And we pushed in 10 threads into a vector. And then we carefully remember to join them after. And this was the troublesome step here where we could sometimes make a mistake of joining immediately after the thread creation rather than just letting the threads run. So if I go ahead and look at thread here in C, and I'll notice that there's another type here. It's called the J thread. And this is available in C20. So you might need to compile with the 20 option or the 2A. I'll show you that it gives you a warning if you forget. So if I click on this, what I want to draw your attention to is primarily the destructor. And this is because C20 with its J thread is using a concept known as RAII. Resource acquisition is initialization. And during the destruction of the J thread, it'll actually make sure that it's joined with the current calling thread. So you can see here, if joinable is true, calls request stop and then join. So that was a lot of words and you know, very small sentence here. And if you just want to think about it in this way, it's just that we don't have to join again if our meaning is for whenever we create the thread to have it execute in the scope of whatever that main thread is. Okay, let's look at an example just to make this a little bit more clear. So it's still part of the thread library here, but now we're going to be using jthread. So I'm going to change these to jthread, and this is now a jthread, and I shouldn't need to join here any of my threads here. Okay, so uh, I'm also going to rename this just so it's a little bit more clear to uh, be a jthread. And let me go ahead and do that here. And let's do J thread. There we are. And J threads. OK, so now if I try to compile, and this will be thread 4.cpp, let's see what happens. Now I'm intentionally going to make a mistake here with C17, because recall again, we need a version of GCC or Clang or MSVC, whatever compiler you're using that's relatively new here. So we do need to do version. Uh, 20, or if you're not sure if you have 20, 2A, which is a little bit earlier. But 20 is probably what you'd want, maybe 23, uh, depending on when you're watching this video. So let's go ahead and compile, and we'll see that it runs. And I'll run the program here. And this should replicate what we've seen in a previous lesson of launching multiple threads. And they shouldn't execute sequentially if we think that this is uh, executed properly. And as we see here, we get the different arguments coming in different orders. So the argument passed in, well, it's um, between the time that the uh, first thread tried to execute, uh, or the first, uh, this would be the second one, uh, another thread started executing, and we get this sort of scrambled in. So we can confirm that this is, in fact, working. And I'll go ahead and put the code here. So it wasn't much of a change. It cleaned up our code a little bit, and we didn't have to worry that we were losing parallelization and just executing sequential code here because our J thread again will join right at the end of the scope in which it is terminated. So I could recommend to folks to use J threads if you have C20 compiler available. I think it's a nice construct and it can help you avoid programmatic errors again from where you're joining. If you need a little bit more control over where you're joining, you can still call join manually on these threads if you'd like to do so sooner, for example. But the option's there, and it's just a little bit more of a powerful construct. So, hope you enjoyed this, and we'll continue on.